Hey guys, Joe Mills here for you, and we've got some awesome standard mowers we're going to be comparing today on this video. Uh, really excited to see how these two mowers do. It's going to be an interesting competition. And What's going on guys? John here for you. You showed up. I did. Out of the woodwork. You told me you had a thing. What thing? You mean like testing mowers? What's going on? Joe Mills here for you. We are testing some awesome stand-on mowers today, and I'm with my good pal, JD Tractor. What's going on, guys? My name's John, if you don't know. I'm from the JD Tractor channel. If you guys haven't seen this channel, you should definitely check it out. I put it on uh, channels I subscribe to on the sidebar of my channel. Anyway, guys, so we've got the Skag V-Ride 2 and the Wright Stander X today, both in 52-inch decks. The one main difference is this has a Kohler Command 25 HP EFI, and that has uh, how many horsepower? It is the Kawasaki FX730V with 23.5 horsepower, and this one is carbonated. So we have um, that type of motor, and we have an electronic fuel injection. So not only will we be comparing the decks of these two mowers and how they cut, we'll also be comparing fuel injection versus carbureted. So anyway, guys, I want to do a brief history of how we kind of got to this point. So I think it was in, what was it like? It was like September, October 2017. Yeah, September, October 2017, we started floating this idea. And I was bouncing some ideas off with Jonathan and said, you know, we did that thing sort of last spring break where we, you know, drag raced your mowers and had a bunch of fun and did that. And I said, I want to do something like that, but I want to do some testing. I always see YouTubers doing testing and I want to get in on that. So Jonathan suggested maybe we try standards. So, yeah. I got in contact with a territory uh, rep for Wright. Um, if you guys don't follow her on Instagram, uh, Judith Ross, uh, Wright Manufacturing. I contacted her. Uh, we have this Stander X to demo, and uh, I also asked if we could see something side by side, so he gave us this uh, V-Ride 2. So, uh, what are some of the stuff we're going to be testing today, man? So, what we're going to be looking at today, obviously, the most important thing of any mower is the cut quality. Uh, this Skag here has the Velocity Plus deck, which is known to be one of the best decks in the industry. And so we're going to be pitting that against the deck that the right has, seeing how those two do. Uh, some other things are going to be operator comfort, because when you're running these mowers for four, five, six, eight hours a day, uh, comfort is very important. So we're going to talk about how well these mowers treat their operator. And then finally, we're going to look over serviceability and durability and see... You know, how easy are these things to take care of and how robust are they in the long run? Back to you, Joe. Thanks, man. Um, Jonathan mentioned everything we're going to be testing. Uh, while we're doing this, if you guys have any questions, please sure to leave a comment uh, down below. And if you like the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And seriously, guys, if you haven't yet, you had you got to go over to John's channel because he's doing some really cool stuff. Yep. Um, but we're going to be looking at all that and more. So, yeah. Let's get to it. Alright guys, so here we have the Wright Stander X and the Skag V-Ride 2. And we are out here at one of Jonathan's properties. It's the front of an HOA. So as you can see guys, it's a roadside. The grass here is a little bit of tall fescue and a little bit of Bermuda with some weeds mixed in. And then a little bit farther up there, there's some a little more weeds. So varying grass types, this is a good indicator to see the cut quality of these machines. As you know, the Skag has the Velocity Plus deck, which is well known in the industry for throwing clippings out as quickly as possible and being a really good dispersal. I don't know too much about the right Aero Core deck, but from people who have had them, I have heard some good things, so I'm excited to see what these two mowers can do. We are going to split right down the middle with the Skag taking the right side and the right taking the left side. We're going to do a couple different sections and we're going to see how each mower comes out.
So we started at this foam pedestal that Joe is standing kind of near. And I mowed this with my John Deere. And then down the center here, you can see the skag over on the right is what that did, just like what Joe said, and the right stander over on the left. So what we'll do now is we'll run up to the other half there. You guys can get an idea of how well this, how well these two mowers did. Get a look down at the grass. This is a double cut. So now what we'll do is run up top and we'll show you guys that up there. Okay guys, so this is the other top part of the property. As you guys can see here, this is again, it's a double cut. It's mostly weeds. So this is what it looks like here at the top of the property. Uh, it's mostly weeds, you know, some dandelion, things like that. A little bit of Bermuda mixed in, not a whole lot of turf. Um, this is a double cut, so not a whole big difference with the mower cut quality here. And then this also goes back, goes around them guy wires for the power poles. And to give you guys an idea just about how tall this grass was, here's the other side of the fence. And you guys can see how tall that is. And then over here we mowed this down to three inch. So it did a pretty good job. So we split this right down the center. The skag was over here closer to the fence and the right was out there closer to the road. And there you guys go. All right, guys, what's going on? Joe Mills here for you with my buddy, John. What's going on, guys? Uh, we just did a test of cut quality on this large yard. Hey, Jonathan, how, how big is this yard? Uh, I think it's right around two acres total. All right, so two acres. It's bumpy. It's got some hills. It's a great indicator. So, Jonathan, would you please point out the stripe that's different? So, guys, I think it's, I think it's this guy right here. You can see a pretty defining line between the right cut quality versus the skag cut quality. And you guys can also see that over on the skag, now this is a double cut, we cut it originally going straight up and down the hill, and then we cut it again going diagonal. And you obviously right now are seeing the diagonal stripe. And the skag, it did a great job, but the stripes out in the distance kind of blended together a little bit. And I will also mention that on this side of the yard, there were less clippings to deal with. On this side of the yard, which the skag cut originally, it left behind more clippings because that's just the nature of this half of the yard. But the right took care of it over here, and you can still see some clippings, but it's not nearly as bad as it was when the skag went over it. And another thing I should mention is that I cut this yard, see, today is Sunday. I cut this yard with my John Deere Z-Track um, Thursday. So it really hadn't grown that much. We hadn't had any rain since then. So this grass, I don't know, Joey, we were taking off maybe, what, an eighth of an inch? Maybe like that. So it was not tall. So there's really no excuse for not being able to disperse already cut clippings. Um, but enough of our opinions. You guys see the facts right there. You make your own judgment on cut quality. Okay, guys, so you just saw the picture and the video of what the cut quality looks like on this yard that we just did. And some of you might be screaming at us right now because you think, no, Skag has one of the best decks in the market. And that's what we were expecting, too. But there's one thing about this. This skag here, I know we've said it before, has 35 hours on it. Had about 31 and a half when we got it. And the last person that used it, I believe, used it in the rain. So the deck is a little plugged up with grass and stuff, as you guys can see right here. So it's not the it's not perfect. The blades also have a little. They have maybe four to six inches of cutting surface here. And here at the tip, that does most of the work. It is a bit rounded off. It is a little dull. But I've definitely seen worse blades. So that's the cut The cut right now on the skag. Over here on the right, this machine currently has a little over 17 hours on it. Uh, had 14.1 on it when we got it. And again, the tip of the blade right here is a bit rounded off. There's a little nick right here. But generally, this blade is a bit sharper and the other thing is that this cutting width is, or cutting edge on this blade is a lot longer than what it is on the skag. The second thing too, guys, is that while this deck still has grass up under it, you can see it's still pretty plugged up. It's not quite as bad as the skag. Um, so that could play into, into effectors. Take that into consideration. These decks are not perfect. We really were expecting more out of the Velocity deck because we've really heard good things about it. And Joe, you've used them in the past and you've seen better things, but that's just what we've seen on these decks. So letting you guys know, trying to be completely honest with you, what's going on with these mowers. And I just want to say quickly that I used Velocity Plus decks last summer, specifically with Turf Tiger, the Cheetah, the Walk Behinds, and we did have a V-Ride there. 
we also had a right stander. Um, so I kind of used those in tandem last year, and uh, I gotta say the Velocity Plus deck was out cutting it even then. So I think there's something uh, going wrong here, but I gotta say, I really like the cut quality on the right. I mean, you just look at the stripe, you look at how it disperses the clippings, it's really well defined, really beautifully done. But yeah, I'm just sort of, I guess, disappointed a little bit. All right, guys, so I'd like to take some time to talk about the operator comfort features of the Skag V-Ride versus the Wright Stander X. So we'll start with the Stander X. Right away when I get on the platform, it's very springy. And I think that's a good thing to help absorb some of the bumps and shocks and ruts you might experience in the lawn. Another thing is this black pad that protects you from the heat of the hydro pumps. It's a pretty thick cushion, and it's, but it's black though. So it absorbs a lot of heat in the summertime, making it kind of hot to lean on. But still a good thing. I appreciate the fact that it has a cushion there. Right away when I get onto the machine, I can see it's a little bit of a smaller footprint. That's nice for the operator. And the controls. The controls here are a little bit different than what you might find on the typical standard. There are two control uh, levers back and forth with one support bar in the middle. For me, I don't necessarily like that. I think it's a lot to move your hands back and forth like that, to go forward and backward. Not a huge fan of it. I'd like the Skag a little bit better, which has uh, two control levers and two support bars. So I, I like that a little bit better. The deck lever here, you're lifting both the deck and the engine, but it's got this nice big spring attached to it, so it feels really effortless to actually lift it. Um, the parking brake though is quite stiff and quite hard to move back and forth. I don't know if that's just a grease issue, something to grease or not, but it's just a little too stiff for my liking. However, the deck lift lever is very easy, very nice. One thing I just hate about the right is that it it's so hard to get to the throttle, the choke, and the blading gauge under the support bars. There's no clear way to get to these things. One of the easiest things I found is just to stick your uh, middle and your index finger underneath and just pull up like so to kind of get to it. So it's not easily recognizable, but overall it's not a bad machine, I have to say. Um, just the operator comfort really isn't where I'd like it to be with this particular machine. Now if we head over to the Skag V-Ride, Right away, when I get on the platform, I feel at home. There is a longer operating stance of this machine. It's a lot lengthier machine than the right, which makes it harder to see off of. But it's not a bad machine. Um, I can still see decently for a stander, but it's definitely a lot better on the right. The right's compact form makes it a lot easier to see a lot of things in front of the deck compared to the Skag. The Skag has a really nice thick cushion that I'm holding on to right here. Really beefy, a lot beefier than the right, I would say. And right away when I get onto the Skag platform, it again feels very springy, just like the right. So I think it will absorb a decent amount of ruts and bumps and bruises in the lawn. So when you take a look at the controls right here, you can see how it's different than the right. You have two uh, center bars that control your travel, whereas the right technically has four different bars that control your travel with one support bar. But the Skag has the two control bars with the two support bars. Very easy for me to move my hands back and forth. I think it's a lot easier than the right, but that's just my personal opinion. The parking brake, very easy to take on and off. I think it's, uh, it's nicely loaded like that, better than the right. However, the deck lift lever on the Skag, granted, I know you're just lifting the deck up and down, you're not messing with the engine, but it's very hard to move this deck up and down. The reason being, I think, is because it has a smaller spring compared to the right, and I think the reason the right has a bigger spring is because you're lifting both the engine as well as the deck, whereas the Skag, you're just lifting the deck. However, I think Skag should take a look at maybe putting a larger spring on it to make it lifting it easier. Because like for me, when I'm going over um, lawns, I like to lift up the deck sometimes, like if I'm going over tree roots. But getting back on the right, you can guys can kind of see that I have to lean over a lot to access the controls. I'm 6'5", I'm a tall guy. Usually I have to make compromises when I'm mowing, like scooting the seat all the way back on riders. But um, on the Skag, I definitely do not have to lean over as much. Um, and that makes things a lot easier. 
Now, I don't demonstrate it here, but the Skag has the same problem that the Wright does, that it, there's no easy way to access the blade controls or the turnkey uh, start. It's just not very easy, but I think that's just a characteristic of all standards, so that's just something users will have to get used to. But for me, I prefer the Skag V-Ride on the operator comfort level. I just think it wins for me, mostly because I don't have to lean over for the controls. The pad is nice, the spring is nice. Uh, I wish the deck lift lever was better. Um, the right, again, is not a bad machine, but just personally, in terms of operator comfort, uh, the Skag wins for me. Okay guys, so next we're going to talk about uh, serviceability and durability of uh, these two mowers. Now, this is not going to be so much about the engine itself. If you guys want to learn more about, you know, Corks, Kawasaki, carbureted versus the applied, there's going to be a link down in the description below. Head over to my channel and go into a nitty gritty discussion on which engine do I think is better than which one. However, for this we're going to talk about general serviceability of the mowers. So we're going to start over here with the right. Now, this is a little more compact mower than what the Skag is, mostly because of how the frame is. And on the engine here, you know, you've got your air filter right up top, easy to get to. You've got your oil and your oil filter down on the side there, real easy to get to. And then if you come around the back of the mower here, say you need to service your pumps and you change your hydraulic oil filter, all you do is you grab the bottom of this pad, lift it up, it stays up for you. Here's your hydraulic oil filter, here's your reservoir. You have one nut right down here on the bottom to be able to remove this panel if you have to get more access there. But overall serviceability is very easy, very compact, very simple. The fuel tank here, you got a nice big ratcheting fuel filler. You have a fuel shutoff valve in case you need to turn the fuel off if you're doing a long transport with the mower. Uh, under the deck, it's typical of any other lawnmower where you have three blades, you've got your nuts, you can take off the of blades. Grease points, they do not put a grease fitting here on the spindle for the front caster. It's just a nut you have to remove and you can either thread a Zeus fitting in there or use like a needle greaser to put grease in it that way. And then on the pivots themselves for the deck, for the, for the raised lower, I don't see any grease fittings on here. I'm assuming there's sealed bearings that are in there, but there's no greasable points there. Moving over to the Skag now, again, it's very similar. I'm not going to go into de huge detail with the engine like I said before, but you know, your air filter right on top. You've got your oil filter down here on the side, and there is a hole for the oil to drain from, from the oil filter. Unlike the right, I don't know if I mentioned it before or not, but there is no hole down there for the, when you remove your oil filter, the oil just drains on the frame. So you, on the polar here, your oil filter's on this side, your dipstick is on the opposite side, so that's a little awkward, but it is what it is. And the biggest difference here is that this, uh, this pad, while it is very comfortable, it is not as easy to get access to on this mower. I cannot grab the bottom and lift. What I have to do is there's two nuts, these little rubber nuts. You unscrew these guys on either side. You can see how long this is taking me to throw to the right. I'm not bashing the skag, but I'm trying to make all the points here. And then you just lift straight up, and there's your access. Now, that didn't take too long. If I owned this mower, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But that is one area where the right does succeed. You've got your oil fill here for your reservoir. I don't know where your hydraulic oil filter is. I don't see it in any clear place, but I'm sure it's either under the mower somewhere or it could be somewhere that I'm not aware of. If you guys know, you know, leave a comment down below. I'd love to know. I'm not super familiar with this mower. You've got two more rubber nuts right here to get this bottom panel off, and that gives you better access to your pumps in case you have to service those. you got a nice big fuel filler neck, and you do have a fuel shutoff valve. Uh, if you have to transport the mower. Now, the last thing that I will touch on serviceability is the Tiger Eye system and how that works. You guys can see that screen right there. So what that screen does, that's your Tiger Eye. You've got your battery level. It also has a, a coolant gauge and some temperature things. They don't necessarily work on this mower because it is air-cooled, but it does give you service reminders. It has little lights on the side if you need to put your parking brake on or shift into neutral or if your PTO is engaged, you know, operator presence, things like that. So that's really handy. Also has a check engine light, which uh, is a little scary now that mowers have check engine lights. It's pretty neat. And meanwhile, over here on the right, you do have just a basic hour meter. However, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, it does flash, you know, service engine or engine now. So it is a little bit of a service reminder, but it's not quite as detailed as the Skag. So anyway guys, that's serviceability on these two mowers. And last but not least, 
Joe, I think it's time that we make our final verdict on which mower would you take home if you had the option to take one home today? Well, guys, I think it's really important to note that not only is buying the right machine important, the, the main thing for me is have you found the right dealer? Because the dealer is going to be the one to take care of you. When your machine is down, they'll be the one to give you a loaner and get you back up right away. So I think if you can find the mower that works right for you, because if you buy any name brand commercial mower, it's going to serve you really well. Like we talked about just with serviceability, they're both really easy to service. They both have their kinks with the deck and cut wall. They're, they're both really similar. The durability, they both seem really well built. So it will come down to personal opinion and how your dealer treats you. It might also come down to price. As I understand it, these two machines are both in the neighborhood of $8,000, depending on how you outfit them with what engine. Me personally, if I was to take one home today, I would take home the Skag V-Ride hands down. The reason being, and my justification for that, is because I really do like the Velocity Plus deck, and I really do like how comfortable I am on this engine. My one caveat is, is that I would not have a Kohler EFI on this machine. The EFI is a powerful engine, but it's just too up and down for me. I would prefer a nice high horsepower Kawasaki, but that's me personally. Hey, Jonathan. If you had to take one of these two mowers home today, which mower would you take? Well, that is an excellent question, Jim. Just to breeze over some points here, uh, it's very important also, as Joe said in previously, that you know, really need to look at your dealers. You really need to see you know, which one's going to support you the best, which one has the best relationship with you, which one wants to take care of you. If you have a fantastic right mower, but their dealership is garbage, then you go with the Skag, and vice versa. So I'll just preface that by saying, preface what I'm going to say with that. The Skag here is a fantastic machine. It's extremely comfortable. Obviously, it won our comfort category, and it was really it was a blast to run. But if I had to take one of these two machines home today, I would go with the right Standard X. Reason being is for me, the cut quality is outstanding. Secondly, while the comfort is not the greatest on this thing, I'm not a huge dude. And this height and the compactness of this machine fits my body style and my height perfectly. Um, with the previous mowing location you guys saw where we did the cut quality video, uh, I was doing a lot of hills, a lot of areas there. We were on these things for you know a decent amount of time. And I found that it was really comfortable just to kind of stand off the pad and just kind of put my feet on the step back here. So I was able to do that and kind of bounce around. It was really comfortable. I also figured out after running this machine for a good amount of time, even though I'm still not a fan of these double uh, drive levers here, having four total levers, what I found instead of putting your thumbs around them like this, that putting your palms on them like this to run it was really comfortable and then you can easily slide forward to shift into reverse. And after the couple stripes laying down there and running this mower for several hours, you know, I really started to get the hang of it and it started to make sense. I still want to see a change there in, on future rights. But if I had to take one of these mowers home, this would be the bad boy right here. Alright guys, well you heard it here first. Thanks so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Be sure to see you in the next one. And if you haven't yet, you need to go check out John's channel for the engine comparison. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And let's landscape together.